Mr. Beckett, come in. It's good to see you again, Counselor. Judge Tate, Kendall Construction. Innocuous. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? What happened to your face? I have AIDS. Welcome to the 2020 Awards Podcast. Today we are revisiting the courtroom drama Philadelphia. I plan on bringing a wrongful termination suit against Charles Wheeler and his partners. You want to sue Wyant, Wheeler, Hellerman, Tetlow, and Brown? Correct. I'm seeking representation. Continue. I misplaced an important complaint. That's their story. Want to hear mine? Today we're joined by costume designer Ron Lehman. Ron has worked with dozens of household names, including Alan Arkin, James Earl Jones, Dolly Parton, David Lynch, Elliot Gould, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Welcome to the show, Ron. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Good. I'm glad to have you here. So anyway, Philadelphia was directed by Jonathan Demme, who won the 2020 Award for Best Director two years ago for his work on Silence of the Lambs. Uh, this film was written by Ron Nyswaner, who whose name I can never pronounce, but I think that's how you say it. Uh, it's the story of a lawyer played by Tom Hanks who has AIDS, who is fired by his conservative law firm because of his illness. Hanks then hires a homophobic small-time lawyer played by Denzel Washington and files a wrongful dismissal suit. 20 years ago, it received five Academy Award nominations for Best Makeup, Best Original Screenplay, and two for Best Song, one by Neil Young and the other one for a song by Bruce Springsteen, which actually took home the Golden Statuette, and Tom Hanks received the award for Best Actor. The film went on to earn just over $200 million globally at the box office and received a fair to middling response from critics, about a C+. Um, Ron, we were just talking, and you were telling me you've sat through this movie twice. Well, in the same night. In the same and night. I've also yes. revisited it yes. several times. Yes, yeah. yes. So I'm going to... Presume you enjoyed it. I did. It, well, it was it was for um, for personal purposes more than anything, <laughs> because it brings back uh, it brought back memories uh-huh. of the whole AIDS crisis, right? And uh, and as a costume designer, it also brought back all the um, the negatives that were associated with it. Because as a costume designer, I would always I went through two agents because they did not know how to present. That I, you had to go in and get an AIDS test to prove that you didn't have AIDS. Basically, if you were hired on a job to show seriously, them, seriously, and so um, for a costume designer, because you know the, um, it all started with uh, Rock Hudson having right. AIDS, and yeah. so they started moving more towards the hiring female costume designers oh God, um, during crazy. this whole crisis. So, um, so it brought back. A lot of discrimination sure. Sure. that happened, but it was, um, y- you know, and at the time, the the federal government, there was nothing there to protect you, um, even though they said there was something there to protect you, but there wasn't. And so I actually carried an AIDS test around showing that I was uh, negative and not positive, uh, just That's to incredible. prove that I could work with any of the stars that were attached to these films. Oh, man. So That's... it was like a clean bill of health. So this... I sat through, and you know, and it it meant a lot for the fight um, for the AIDS crisis, and it was, you know, and I, I felt like you know, yeah, Tom Hanks, you've got Antonio Antonio Banderas, but um, it was the subject matter that more sure. that moved me more than anything else. Sure. Well, I mean, I'm, that totally makes sense. I also think, I think that's <clears throat> actually one of the problems I have with the film is that it. it I think the script is a script about discrimination, but I think Jonathan Demme made it a movie about AIDS. Mm-hmm. And while I think it was topical at the time, I think it's sort of like it hasn't really stood the test of time. And it's like maybe it was an important film at the time, but it 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 it, it was it was a mixed um, among the the gay community. It was totally mixed in different directions. Yeah, um, there were very positive, but there were also very negative. Uh, reviews because um, those people that have lived had lived through the AIDS crisis totally different than um, those people that hadn't lived through the AIDS crisis or right. hadn't been associated so closely. Um, what well, was their objection with it? The objection was that 
um, they showed all the the harshest, the worst things possible, and um, just to make it more uh, sympathetic to the AIDS crisis. And I think there were other. I mean, there's definitely nothing positive about it, but I think there was something that um, that there were people that continued to live. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's so many documentaries that were done about people that have survived the AIDS crisis over the years, right. and also that lost their partner. You know, to devastating to the you know how devastated they were. So, I um, and they just said it was over dramatized. It was over. It was overdone, mm-hmm. and um, my whole feeling about it was that you can never. I'm. I'm a, I'm a, a glutton for punishment, so to speak, because I can sit there and I can ball through something like this. And I think I balled through the movie the first time because I just brought back flooding memories of all my friends that had died at that point. Sure. And so that's what it – and I wanted to go to the movie by myself um, so I could anticipate that happening. <laughs> it's like me when I watched The Natural. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was like, no one's Which I gonna see too. me cry. <laughs> so it's yeah, I mean I you know, and you know, as far as the the overall quality of it, you know, and the overall quality of it I I had no problems with. I mean I felt like yeah. it was I felt like I was there, but I think the makeup was even though it was nominated, I think it was overdone. I mean when you look back on it now and it's whether it would uh, withstand the test of time. I, well, it's funny. I, I actually, I, f- I felt like, well, Lee, you had a, you had a big problem with one makeup issue. Oh, you could see his bald cap. Oh yeah, exactly. it was terrible. Yeah, you know, put it in a turtleneck. Yeah, I, I will say though, at least he looked sick. <laughs> oh no! They, you know, it's like when they pan across the courtroom. It's like, oh, that's the sick guy. No, it was, the, it was, it was a progression that I know he lost weight. During yeah. the course of time, which, so which as Lee also mentioned, he seemed to gain back for the very last scene in the bedroom, yes, exactly. or in the hospital. Yeah. I, I, I do think it might have been a bad angle. It might have been, but it was but it was Tom Hanks today, chubby Tom Hanks. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, can't so. be that chubby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so all right. Well, I mean, that makes sense. That that um, you know, I could see how somebody would have a personal connection to it. That would that would definitely. And, you know, Jonathan Demme is always so great about uh, bringing to the forefront uh, right. subject matters. I mean, it's like Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. It's one that when I walked out, I was looking over my shoulder to see who was behind me. Sure. That could possibly be, you know, dismantling, you know, human beings. Right. Well, um, that's, so, that's, see, that's one, of the things that I was, that's one of the things I was really disappointed about was like, I love Silence of the Lambs. I think it's an amazing movie. I've watched it dozens of times, and and it's it's pretty much the exact same team that mm-hmm. made Silence of the Lambs. I mean, pretty much everybody in the opening credits is on both films. And this movie kind of felt like the script was a rough draft. It felt like a, a rough cut of the whole film. Like everything about it just seemed kind of a little bit like uh, you could cut a couple of frames off of that shot mm-hmm. you could have you know tightened well, I up think a it was bit. a rush I really think it was all very rushed it's possible yeah because um, because of the subject matter disappearing and I think Jonathan Demi had so many friends that were AIDS infected right that I think he wanted to make a voice on it right plus the politics at the time you know everything about it um, even through the years up to that point that you go because you know, Reagan was totally oblivious to it. Well, that and everything. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so you, you know, there were a lot of people that just wanted to turn their backs on it. Yeah. Um, and even in people in the gay community wanted to do the same thing because it brought a uh, bad connotation to the gays. So, Right, which I guess, I mean, to me, I think the film was trying to shed a positive light on this affliction. And in fact, I was reading that, uh, Springsteen, one of the reasons they brought him in was to kind of draw a, a wider net mm-hmm. to, to, or cast a wider net to draw a larger, less maybe gay oriented audience into the, into the story and kind of like the hey, Jersey people, the Jersey people, yes, exactly. <laughs> that audience. Yes, exactly. I think, you know, what's interesting to me is that this really is Denzel's movie though. 
Oh, it is. I mean, he's he's the homophobe at the beginning who comes to see this community as as human beings mm-hmm. and realizes that he's been in the wrong. But the film is Tom Hanks's movie, and I think that's kind of where I was like, "Wait, what's going on? This we should be following." Denzel through all of this right. and Tom should just be the catalyst for this but instead it's it's really about watching this guy deal with this affliction and then pass and it's like well the interesting stories over here what do we come come to, come this way no it's true there was less emphasis on that but I think um I don't know I have to keep watching it to to have some compassion for Denzel Oh, Denzel's wasn't. feelings. Well, you know, not, that, there's nothing that changes him. I don't understand. Like, there's two moments in the film where he, there's the moment where he, at first he refuses the case, which I think is great, and then he suddenly decides because he sees Hanks in the library, sort of getting mistreated, and he decides like, oh, now I'm going to take on this case. But there's nothing that there's nothing emotionally uh, inner uh, inner emotion that takes on right. Uh, a turn, and right. you really don't. I mean, even when he's talking to his wife, there's this. There's a compassion there, but you don't see it. A deep compassion yeah. for a fellow human being, whether right. they're afflicted with AIDS or whatever. Yeah, and I think that's where. That's I agree with you on that aspect because I just never felt that Denzel was. And the, the, that other moment where supposedly he has the turn is when he watches Hanks. To that melodramatic opera, and to me, I'm actually thinking like, it seems like most people would be going, "This guy's nuts." I'm I, like, I couldn't relate to that scene at all, uh-huh. and it's supposed to be the scene that kind of humanizes him, and it's like, wow, this like I don't know anybody that does stuff like this, and and it really kind of made me go, yeah, I'm like Denzel leaves, but then he stops and he thinks about going back and supposed to be that's supposed to be the moment where he has a shift and it's like I don't get this I didn't get that he had a shift yeah I no, I, never, kind of bad. I never really was convinced he had a complete shift well, even he, to the very end yeah because I think he couldn't wait till Tom Hanks died so he can move <laughs> you know so, no, so he can move on to right, the next right. case <laughs> right um and, it, and it's weird, too, because like I, th- I think there's ways that they could have easily done that, especially since, I guess, originally they were trying to get Daniel Day-Lewis for the part. Right. And so once they cast Denzel, it seems like, well, now you can really sort of, here's a guy who can relate to prejudice. Isn't there a visual way you can kind of show him being mistreated, either because of his color or maybe because he's representing this, this gay client, maybe he's the well, queer they, they, lawyer or something. They did show that in the scene in the bar where his friends were ribbing him. Yeah, but they were ribbing him. That's not the same as like well, somebody well, like... Well, no, but then the bartender comes up and says that totally bigoted thing to him. Again, I think he needed to get his ass kicked or something like that for, for being associated. You don't think that would have been too heavy-handed? No, I think that's a visual way of telling a story. Again, it's like it's like show me something. Don't have like a bartender go. I don't like the queers. It's like well, that's that's not going to change Denzel's no. opinion. It's like if, no, he, it's if, if, if you put him in Tom's shoes, opinions. yeah. If you put him in Hanks' shoes, it's like whoa, I didn't do anything. And it's like, yeah, we don't care. This is how we treat. This is how we treat the gays. And it's like then it becomes like oh, geez, this guy is going through hell. Well, they did the opposite. They had him hit on, and it made him more uncomfortable. I know, but it's like... I was just kind of disgusted by the scene with his wife when he just... She was, like, she was joking with him, like, oh, no. you're, you're kind of racist. Or you're, you're, you're kind of homophobic. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then she just sees how homophobic he is. And yeah. And she just laughs and, like, you're a charming rogue. It's I like, know, yeah. Oh, your <laughs> husband's completely disgusting in front of your child. Like, this is the person that's going to raise yeah. your daughter. Like, that would have been an interesting storyline to have her right. realize Again. that... Her husband is, wow, I had no idea, and exactly. be disgusted by it. And that might have been a change, hearing his words back to him. Right, uh-huh. right. So, anyway, that's why I think the movie really lacked. And it's like you could have told the Tom Hanks character's story through Denzel's character, but instead it was just like, and now let's watch this man die some more. Right. <laughs> like, no, I know. Well, that was like the pro- prolonging of the... Death sentence. Yeah, but he had to make it through the uh, through the trial. So yeah, and that's another thing. 
I'm oh, a, the I, trial was like I can't stand trial movies. I, it's just oh, me, I love them. I know you do. I don't understand why. It's like save it for CNN. <laughs> oh, I, I like all those lawyer shows. I love a I, good, I love a good courtroom drama. Ron. Oh, I do too. Do you? I, I just watched Anatomy of a, of a Murder oh, yes. last week. You'd like that one. Yeah, maybe. I don't think I would. Oh, that's good. You also watched 12 Angry Men, which I do love. Yeah. Oh, Angry Men. Yeah. yeah. But that's after the trial. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, in the same, uh, it's in the same genre. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go that far. Um, yeah, anyway, the movie to me, it, it, it reminded me of like, have you guys ever watched an old episode of All in the Family? Yes. It doesn't hold up. It's like in the day when it was on, it was like, oh my God, this is like... <laughs> so edgy. It's yeah. So controversial. Yeah, and now it's just now like... Now it's just like, oh, what a day. Really? What are we talking about? <laughs> but you know, we were just... Um, Drew and I were just talking about um, when they said that uh, Gene Stapleton had died. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, the one episode that I can always remember is when she was raped. Right. And that I don't was just remember that episode. And it was just the most horrific thing. And I will always remember to this day her just everything in you know that had happened in that episode. Well, that makes sense because that's something that isn't apparently going away anytime soon. And then they were talking about there was one episode they were actually talking about on NPR about her. Um, it was the I can't remember what was the next door. There was friends that lived next door that moved in or something that were gay. Oh, I don't remember. I didn't watch that show so much. And it was just really interesting how the NPR chose what episodes to talk about, but they never talked about the rape scene, which mm. I thought was Gene Stable, and she had been nominated right. for that episode. That's funny. I don't really remember that episode. But you have to revisit it. It was a big deal. Really, yeah. It was aired. huge because... Because, you know, she's daffy. She, right. Well, yeah, she's, yeah, an yeah. Old, she's an old lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were just like, going, and I just remember Archie Bunker's reaction to it was there was no, he didn't know how to console her, give her compassion. Sure. Well, so, see, I mean, that's the thing is like they, they are well-drawn characters and that makes sense. And, and, it just, all... and, and at the same time, Denzel is not that compassionate. Right. I mean, even to the bitter end. Yeah. He's compassionate when he dies, but... Because then he doesn't have to be around. You know, it's like saying farewell to the gay community. Right. After you've won it and you've seen him. Yeah. Um, I think that's the thing that I, I started thinking about. It's just like, well, Denzel's not going to be the the attorney for the gay community anymore. I think this was his his one shot and right. that's it. Yeah. Oh. I have no segue for our commercial. You know what would be a great segue? Go. Is one of the ones that they have in um, a nice transition, like in Philadelphia, where the um, the little flip flop. Oh that yeah, they do the Laverne and Shirley. Do you remember the? There's the like scene a couple scenes where they would like they would do like a weird wipe that was like. Oh yes. Like, bloop, bloop. It was like it was like a sitcom. Yeah. It was yes, so yes, bizarre. Yes. Yeah, it was very strange. Well, if we had one of those, We'd we use would it right now. We would go to commercial. Our sponsors today are the Grand Illusion Theater, located in a converted dentist's office. The Grand Illusion is Seattle's classiest, weirdest, and completely volunteer-operated cinema, screening the world's finest art house, foreign, and revival films. Located in the University District, right across from the Jack in the Box. For more info, visit grandillusioncinema.org. Honest Tea, nature made it right, we put it in a bottle. Refreshingly honest, honest tea. Visit honesttea.com to find a distributor near you. Some people think you have an attitude problem, Beckett. Really? Who thinks that? I do. Excuse me. Am I being fired? Let me put it this way, Andy. Your place in the future of this firm is no longer secure. Flip flop. Well, yeah, we're, we're back. back. Hey, party scene. Yeah. yeah. Well. Uh, well, why don't we take a look at some of the potential uh, things that might get nominated at the 2020 awards this year? Um, anything that jumps out to you, Ron? <laughs> Tom Hanks. <laughs> I don't know Tom. if he will get nominated. You don't think so? I, mean, I don't not, think he will. I'm not sure that he will. It's a really hard um, audience. 
Well, you know, I think this is... I think this is a very strong year for movies, and I think there's a lot of good oh, performances of good. out there. And I don't know if I don't know if I'm going to drop them into my top five. Really? I mean, I don't think it's a costume movie. I don't think it's. Yeah, um, there's there's like nothing that really jumps out to me at all. Because um, I, I mean, even performances, I don't think. Dot Denzel, his character could have Antonio had a, Banderas. It, no. <laughs> He'll Mary Steenburgen. Mary Steenburgen. I love Mary Steenburgen. I love Jason Robards, but he kind of played. Yeah, but he always plays. plays He's just, he was just being Jason Robards, yeah. Best song? Is that going to come back? Oh, for sure, right? Streets of Philadelphia? It's a great song, but I don't well, know what it offers the movie anything. Except. But it's the whole soundtrack in itself. It kind of is, yeah. I mean, it's just the whole soundtrack through the I mean, that's, I think, what helped the movie was the soundtrack because... You had such a wide variety. I mean, I I enjoy the soundtrack. Yeah. I mean, I have it, and I listen to it a lot. Do you? Yeah. Well, it just brings back, again, it's this memory, mm-hmm. the sensory yeah. connection of feelings more than anything else. It yeah. wasn't, I mean, I could actually probably watch the movie with my eyes closed and associate certain scenes sure. with the music, which I do the way it is. So. You have emotional moments with opera? I do. When guests are over. <laughs> I do. But it was just like, that was so, I mean, you know, I watch it. I could watch it now and I think it's so corny. It's yeah. just like, oh. It's Oscar God. bait. It's like, <laughs> yeah. stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> could you do a few lines for us? No. <laughs> the thing I, this, when I, oh, the opening credits of this movie were too long by, by half, right? Sure. But it seemed like with the song, and the scenes they were showing, I'm like, oh, this is a movie about crime or, you know, poor folks in Philadelphia. It, no. it made no sense to me. Yeah, it was... It didn't set up anything. No. Most most opening credits don't. I'm always impressed when I see a movie that has opening credits where I'm like, this is what the movie's about. And I rarely see that. Yeah, that's a good point. I it just reminded me of... But this was exactly what the movie's not about. Like, it set you up for a different movie. Yeah. It was almost like Rocky. I mean, it's showing all the visuals, right? Yeah, of Philadelphia that was it had nothing unrelated, to do with it was, unrelated to the movie we're going to watch. It didn't matter they were they were in Philadelphia. It had nothing to do with it. Well, that's another thing. I mean, the title I can only presume is it's the city of brotherly love, and well, they wanted to call I mean, it people like us at risk or probable cause were working titles. Yeah, I think they would have had to get Richard Gere if they were going to call it probable cause. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's That's good. contractually bound to play that character, that movie. So, um, yeah, I don't know. The, 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 it, I don't see. To me, again, this is. I think the movie doesn't really know what it's about, you know. And so it's like I think the opening credits are going to be like I don't know. Get us shots of. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, that's the title. Well, that's the reason why I think the whole film was rushed to get out. Yeah. Because uh, I think everybody else had contractual obligations. Maybe. I I, I don't know. I, to me, it really, it really just seemed sort of like I feel like the screenwriter was trying to tell one story and the director was trying to tell another. And, and like I said, it, hugely disappointing for me because I do really – I really like most of Jonathan Demme's work. And, and I hadn't seen this movie until the other night, so – Wow. It was one of those, like, I was like, I don't know. This really looks kind of heavy handed. And, <laughs> and the other thing that's interesting about the, the, the Demi stuff, you know, he, he, he kind of found that looking straight into camera style mm-hmm. on Silence of the Lambs, which works beautifully because it's about coveting and, you know, looking at women specifically. But he seems to have applied this to everything he's done since. And it's like, no, this doesn't work for Well, you know, I think film. there was, wasn't there storylines that Jonathan Demme wasn't really attached to direct it to begin with? And that oh. they, the people passed on it because of subject matter. And actors passed on it because they didn't want to do it, because they didn't want to be associated uh, with any gay topics. I mean, there was still that. Yeah, a lot this of people was, turned down This all was the 1993. Parts. Right, So yeah. it's still... It's still kind of fresh that people don't want to be associated with it. And that's, I think, the reason why 
Tom Hanks won the award because it was more acknowledging the fact that he was an actor that would do a part like right. this and nobody else would. Yeah. And I think Jonathan Demme, I still, for some reason or another... I don't know. Everybody, every straight actor back then who played a gay role won an Oscar. It just seemed obvious, like, you're going to get an Oscar. William Hurt. Well, yeah, exactly. No, it's true. But I just, you know, but I think there was something in there that Jonathan Demme wasn't attached to it to begin That's with. It's possible. I, I hadn't read any of that, but... And, I, and there was... But I do feel like it was rushed, so it can make the awards. Yeah. The awards circuit. And I yeah. think it was... Um, Although I think it did come out in June. It, I'm trying to think when I saw it. Because I've been trying it. to screen all of our screenings I'm trying to the think it was raining the night that I saw it. That could be any so time. It could be that June, June, July, that, that, that August. Sounds, that I sounds like... Um, um, yeah, I think... I don't know. It is, mm-hmm. Even if it was rushed, I don't think you can just go like, oh, well, that thing I did on that last movie, I'll just apply. Because he does it, too, in Precious. Mm-hmm. And he does it a little bit. I think he does it in Manchurian Candidate. It's like, dude, you got to step away from this thing. Like, find a different treatment for a different story. It's not going to work. It's not an apply. No, I agree. It's not an yeah. apply all. Um, yeah. I don't know. It just seemed like there was a rush for the subject matter more than anything else to get it out. Yeah. Sooner than later, because there was politics going on at the time, and I can't even. That makes sense. I mean, it's very possible. They know. shot the movie in sequence. Fun I did fact. read that. Yeah. So maybe at the end, it was just a bad angle because he couldn't gain all that weight back maybe, so fast. Unless six months later, there was like oh, he'd gone on to do. We weren't recording buddies then. <laughs> so we need you to come back. Yeah. Maybe he pours up. Although he kept the weight well, off for Forrest Gump. I'm surprised that. Uh, Denzel, he has a a tendency to gain weight rather rapidly. Oh, they and actually, this was his thinnest. They actually asked him to gain weight for this, so that there was a stronger visual contrast between the two. Oh, but he was he was thin as this thin compared to he was pretty thin. He did look a little. Compared to all his chunky roles, he has a. I've seen him look leaner. He has a tendency to pork up rather quickly. I also think his suits were a little too big. Unlike myself, which made him look a well, little. Well, no, thinner. that's what they do. I mean, it was like with Tom, they did. Because he hadn't lost weight quick enough. So they made the clothes bigger. They make your clothes bigger. Yeah. And then they... But Denzel Washington, I thought his suit was a little ill-fitting. Made him look a little too small. He looked like a... He looked, they were too big for him. looked like a TV lawyer. He was a TV lawyer. I know. That was... <laughs> He's a TV guy. Yeah. I think they could have made a, a more compelling reason for him to take the case, like publicity, or he saw something in it for anything, himself. Anything. That would have made more sense to I me. Just, I have no idea why he takes the case. It was just like the script says I'm supposed to. So He's a poor attorney. He wants notoriety. They but should have told me that. They should have made that more clear. So Anyway, I have, I have nothing else to add to this conversation. Ron? Nothing. Lee? Oh, the ending? Where they oh, just showed the picture. The, the Tom movie, Tom Hanks home movies. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I do want to talk it about the went ending. On forever. When the funeral, there's a guy that comes in or at the, at the oh, wake. At the there's wake. a guy that comes in and he looks like an extra out of Goodfellas and they pan with him. And we've never seen this guy before. And we, we, were, we all started talking about, like, who's this guy? There's like a guy from Goodfellas. Like, Tommy the Weasel was there and everybody was at the wake. Eddie the Ferret came and. <laughs> Paulie it, Whiskers. It, 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 was. It, it really, I think it was Miguel's father. I don't but know. But like, who cares? But, but we don't know who this guy. It was it, just distracting. It's really no, but weird. it was just like the back. It's like the back lot of one of the studios, and you see all these people walking around with the different costumes on. Right. That's what the whole wake reminded me. Of. It was <laughs> right, like, right, right. And it was. We need more people at this wake. It was right. just the oddest thing. Yeah, yeah the pictures. Those were Tom Hanks, but yeah. who cares? And it just went on forever. And again, it's it's really Denzel's story, but it didn't, right. didn't play out that way. No, fade out. Um, it could have been it could have been a really good movie if they if they made it his story. I think they could have. He could I have think. had some character development. We could have seen him change, or he didn't change. Maybe yeah. that's the point. Yeah, but then why are you telling the story? Yep. So topical. Anyway, thanks for joining us, Ron. Yes. Is uh, if anybody wants to catch up. On your antics, is there anywhere? Do you have a Twitter account? I don't. Facebook? Facebook, I do. They are. They can look for you on Facebook. They can. <laughs> you should get a Twitter account. It'd be fun. I have one, but I don't know how to use it. Ask Gerard. 
Whoa, whoa, ask Chris. Whoa. <laughs> I'll ask you. <laughs> All right. Cheers. We'll get that worked out after. Uh, once again, I want to thank our sponsors, Grand Illusion Cinema and Honest Tea. If you're a movie lover and would like to support us, you can subscribe to the 2020 Film Club. Your annual subscription gets you into our monthly four-year consideration screenings here in Seattle, plus a ticket to our annual ceremony in February. It's over $100 value for only $40. To enroll, just visit us at 2020awards.org and look for the subscriber link. Until next time, remember, it's never too late to start thinking about the past. <laughs>